Ingrid Friel with Better Homes and Gardens All Seasons. I'm here with my friend Dan with TCF Home Loans. I'm pretending to be an actual first time buyer and Dan is gonna talk through a scenario that we came up with. It might be close to your situation. We'll talk percentages a little bit too. So, hi Dan. Hi. I am here to buy a house or would like to talk to you about buying a house. Okay. And I just don't know if I'm gonna start looking at listings how much house I should look at, you know, what price point I should start looking at. Mm -hmm. So um, what do you need to know from me? Great question. Budgeting is is uh, definitely important when starting to, to search for a home and okay. definitely something you want to do before you actually get out and actually go into some open houses or, or speak with a realtor. Um, about what price point you want to uh, search for. I am a planner, so let's start planning. <laughs> what what do I have to do here? All right, so let's just hypothetically say you make seventy thousand dollars. Here oh, you go. Yeah. Um, you know, a good rule of thumb: twenty five percent of your your gross annual income, so seventy thousand, not what your your net pay is on your paycheck, but for qualifying, uh, we'll use your gross income. So seventy thousand, okay. we'll take. 25% uh, of that is about $14.50 uh, a month, okay? okay? So that is, you know, in the ballpark of what you want to maybe keep your, your mortgage payment to. You can obviously go slightly higher than that. You could go lower. It really comes down to your goals at the end of the day of, of um, what other expenses you might have or, or goals you want in your life. Uh, do you want to travel? Okay. And so forth. So 25%. So I've kind of heard the math out there about take your income and multiply it by something. Is mm -hmm. that something I want to do too or kind of do this 25%? Um, I like to go off of a monthly uh, payment. Um, okay. You can certainly multiply your income by uh, three or four to come up with maybe a, a price point of what you'd like to purchase. But okay. At the end of the day for qualifying and what's really going to affect you on a monthly basis is going to be that monthly payment. So okay. that's what I like to stick to is um, what really is going to be comfortable okay. um, when it comes to, to making that a monthly payment. So if we know the 70000 and we know the monthly mortgage expense, does this tell me what um, purchase price of home I should buy? Uh, it does start to break that down. Okay. Um, you know. It depends too on you know, do I need mortgage insurance? Okay. Um, this is going to include a lot of times uh, your homeowner's insurance and your, your property taxes. Okay. Um, am I buying a townhome? Uh, maybe I have an association payment. Okay. That's not going to be included with this. So uh, if if your maximum payment um, needs to be fourteen fifty, well maybe the the price point needs to be lower if you need to add certain things in like mortgage insurance and association payments. You got okay. a couple things you're going to fill in for me. So I need down payment money. All right. You can, uh, a minimum is going to be about 3%. Um, okay. There are definitely uh, options out there. For our example sake, we'll do 3%. Okay. 3% of what? 3% of the purchase price, our example, will be 250000 okay. um, which is going to be $7,500. Okay. I'm looking for a house that's approximately 250000 here in the Twin Cities. Okay. And I've heard a lot about closing costs. How yeah. do I know how yeah. much my closing costs are going to be? You know, they're, they're going to be different in every property. Okay. Um, escrows are going to be slightly different. Insurance and taxes are going to be a variable there. Okay. But closing costs, a good rule of thumb to stick to maybe about 3%. So another okay. $7,500. Okay. So 3% again. And seventy five hundred okay. for closing costs, okay. and that's going to include setting up your escrow accounts for for your um, property taxes and insurance, okay. um, paying that first year's annual premium for insurance. So that okay. number is going to include that, along with um, any uh, possible discount points of, of what you're going to okay. do to, to buy the interest rate down. That's great. So I would add these two numbers together to estimate having some cash on hand for closing. Yeah, so these two amounts are gonna be what you would need in cash for the, the closing. Okay. Um, there are some things that you can do to, to help uh, lower that. There are some down payment assistance programs available. You okay. might wanna you know, check to see if you qualify for those. There's um, restrictions on, on those or limitations. Okay. Uh, income wise and credit scores. Um, but also there there may be a seller that's willing to help contribute towards some of those closing costs. It's always nice to speak with your real estate agent um, regarding that as well. 
Great. Well, this is a pretty specific example, but I could kind of see you start with the income and then this is 25% uh, of my income divided by 12? Yes. Okay. And then this is uh, the minimum down payment. So, of course, what happens if I put more money down? The monthly payment goes down. That's always nice. Okay. Um, so, at the end of the day, we, you know, will consult with you as far as do I want to keep that additional funds in, in my savings account? Is there any work that needs to be done um, to the property once I buy it? Uh, do I want to have a safety net there? Um, and to put down, say, an extra $10,000, that's a, uh, a lot of money, you might only change the payment 50 to $60 a month. So okay. when we start going with those numbers, people um, a lot of times say, I'd rather have that money in my bank account than, than lower my payment that much. Um, so it, it's a case-by-case -case basis, but um, those are uh, good numbers to, to think about. Okay. Well, thanks, Dan. Dan with TCF Home Loans here today, and I'm Ingrid Friel with Better Homes and Gardens All Seasons. Thanks for watching. Thank you.